Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're diving headfirst into something uh, pretty significant for the tech world. Google's annual Made by Google Hardware Showcase. Yeah, it's a big one. It's officially slated for Wednesday, August 20th in New York City. And look, this isn't just another product refresh. It feels like a really pivotal moment for Google's whole consumer electronics lineup. Absolutely. Google has you know, strategically built up a ton of anticipation for this. And as we unpack the Pixel 10, you really got to keep their AI first mantra front and center mm -hmm. because it feels like every design choice, every chip innovation, display tweak, especially the camera and software stuff, mm -hmm. it all funnels back into making this phone like an unparalleled intelligent companion. And our mission today really is to boil down all the important stuff from everything we're anticipating. We're talking, you know, the expected Pix 10 models, that underlying Tensor G5 chip, right. uh, big steps forward in display tech, the camera systems. That's always a story with Pixel. Always. Braffle real world battery performance, and definitely the next wave of AI features powered by Android 16. By the end of this deep dive, you should have a, uh, a really complete, informed perspective. Pricing, availability, the works. Okay, so let's nail down the confirmed details first. Yeah. The Made by Google event, it's locked in. Sure. Wednesday, August 20th, 2025. Live streamed globally on YouTube. Kick off 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And what's kind of revealing is the official invitation itself. It teases the latest on Pixel phones, watches, buds, and more. Right. So that basically confirms the Pixel 10 series, the Pixel Watch 4, Pixel Buds 2a, standard stuff, kind of. Expected, yeah. But beyond those expected updates, there's some pretty compelling speculation uh, around Android XR smart glasses. Ooh. Okay. It signals, you know, Google's much broader, longer-term hardware plans. They're definitely looking beyond just the phone in your pocket. And the timing, the strategic yeah. timing of this launch, that's where Google's bigger game yeah. really comes into view. Isn't oh, it? absolutely. They always seem to do this August thing right before Apple's usual September iPhone reveals. That can't be a coincidence. No way. Strategically, it's a uh, it's a very deliberate move. Google wants that early market buzz, you know? Influence the early adopters. Get the story out first. Exactly. Establish their narrative before Apple drops its big news. It shows, I think, a much more confident, more competitive Google. They're clearly aiming to grow market share, especially in North America, where Pixel's actually been doing pretty well lately, this mm. August launch window. It could really become the new standard. It just ramps up that late summer smartphone fight. It's a direct challenge, really, for Mindshare for market position. Okay, let's shift to the lineup itself then. What models are we actually expecting in the Pixel 10 series this year? Well, industry sources are pretty much all pointing towards four new phones. <laughs> and Pro XL and the Pixel 10 Pro Fold. Right, the Fold coming back. Yep. And for folks looking for the uh, the budget-friendly A series, the Pixel 10a is expected later, probably spring 2026, something like that. Gotcha. And looking at the leaks, the design, it seems more like subtle refinement, not a massive change. Yeah. What do you see? That's exactly right. The Pixel 10 series looks like it's largely keeping that recognizable design language. Yeah. You know, Google's signature camera bar across the back. The visor. Yeah. Exactly. Prototypes for both the regular 10 and the 10 Pro look really similar to each other and honestly pretty close to the Pixel 9 lineup. Only minor tweaks expected for the Fold model. Mm. But, you know, with Google, the real story is often what's under the hood. Always. And speaking of under the hood or maybe just under the flash, there's that intriguing new sensor spotted on the base Pixel 10 leaks. Uh, yeah. Speculation is pointing towards a temperature sensor, kind of like the one on the Pixel 9 Pro. Is this something people were asking for? Yeah. Or is Google maybe dipping into, like, health features? That's a great question. And it kind of highlights Google's focus, right? It's yeah. on the internal hardware, the software innovation, particularly AI and that Tensor G5 chip, not so much a big external redesign. Right. This approach, it lets them put resources where they think it matters more performance, maybe better thermal management, integrating new things like that potential temperature sensor. It suggests they're pretty confident with the current look mm -hmm. and they're prioritizing the intelligence, the user experience, plus this uh, refined strategy. It could tie into the rumors of stable pricing. Oh, that would be nice. Which, yeah, in this climate, consumers would probably welcome that. Definitely. Yeah. Now, let's get to the heart of it. The Tensor G5. This is being positioned as the Pixel 10s, like biggest feature. Yeah. 
Leaked benchmarks suggest a performance jump of up to 36% over the G4. Yeah. A 36% leap. I mean, that's pretty substantial for one generation. What's really driving that? Okay, what's absolutely critical here, the development behind it. This new version, it's Google's first 3M meter chip. And crucially, it's the first Tensor chip being made by TSMC, not Samsung Foundry. Ah, the TSMC shift. That's big news. It's huge. This shift isn't just about raw speed. It's Google taking like direct foundational control over its silicon future. Hmm. This move, it really signals Google's commitment to that AI first vision, making sure they're not bottlenecked by someone else's manufacturing, paving the way for, you know, truly optimized on device AI and hopefully finally putting those past heat issues to bed. Okay, so break that down. What are the real world impacts for like an average person using the phone day to day? Well, a more efficient G5 chip plus. There's that rumor about switching to a MediaTek T900 5G modem. Right, getting away from the Samsung modems. Exactly, which have historically been kind of power hungry. The combination is expected to mean uh, real meaningful battery life gains across all the models. Huh. We're talking potentially less heat, more consistent performance all day long, and genuine all day use, even if you're hammering the AI features. That's a big deal for everyday usability, especially if you game or use a lot of AI tools or you're just a power user. And focusing specifically on that AI performance, how is the G5 expected to handle those really heavy AI tasks or the computational photography stuff Google's known for? The G5 is supposedly engineered to run at peak performance for longer stretches, so avoiding that throttling you sometimes see. Yeah, that slowdown. Even during heavy AI calculations or those demanding photo processing workloads. Now, while the G5 is expected to get a new GPU from Imagination Technologies, some reports suggest Google might be using slightly older CPU cores. Interesting. Why would they do that? It implies Google is really doubling down on its unique thing, on-device AI and computational photography. For those tasks, consistent, efficient performance is maybe more important than topping raw CPU benchmark charts. So prioritizing the smarts over just raw speed numbers. Exactly. This focus could really cement the Pixel's identity as, you know, the AI phone. And while Tensor G5 is powering the intelligence, Google's also making sure the window into that experience to display is better too, brighter, more comfortable. Significant upgrades here, right? Yeah, definitely. All models are expected to be at least 200 nits brighter than the Pixel 9 equivalents. Google's calling them their most readable yet in bright light. Okay, number specifics. Uh, the Pixel 10 Pro and Pro XL. They're anticipated to hit an HDR peak brightness of 2,250 nits. That's up from 2050. Space bump. The standard Pixel 10 is expected to reach 2,000 nits, up from 1,800. And the Fold, rumored 1,850 nits inside, 2,050 nits outside. Again, a good jump from the 9 Pro Fold. No. Plus, the Fold's cover display might be a bit bigger, too, maybe 6.4 inches. And there's this other subtle but potentially really nice upgrade for comfort. Mm -hmm. The 480 hertz PWM display on the Pro models. Right, pulse width modulation. That's a first for Pixel. Explain why that matters. So lower PWM frequencies can cause this invisible flicker that for some people leads to eye strain, headaches, even nausea sometimes. Uh -huh. So bumping it up to 480 hertz drastically reduces that flicker. It makes looking at the screen for long periods much more comfortable. It shows Google's paying attention to these, you know, subtle but meaningful quality of life things. But only on the Pro models. Seems that way. It looks like Android 16's adaptive refresh rate feature also won't be on the base Pixel 10. So they are segmenting a bit, saving that premium display experience for the pros. Okay. But yeah, this whole strategy, it tackles real user issues. Mm. Seeing the screen outside, reducing eye strain. It definitely helps position the Pixel Pro line as top tier, considering those nuanced user needs, not just raw specs. Okay, let's pivot to cameras. This is where Google usually, you know, really shines. But the story this year, especially for the base Pixel 10, has a really interesting twist. It does. The standard Pixel 10 is supposedly getting a triple camera setup. That's a big change from the usual dual cameras on the base model. It includes a 5X telephoto lens, apparently with a 10.8 MP sensor. Right. More versatility. But it, this is the surprising part. That addition comes with a trade-off. Uh-oh. To fit that telephoto in the existing camera bar, Google seems to have opted for a smaller main sensor. The main camera is reportedly a 48 MP sensor similar to the Pixel 9a. Wait, smaller than the Pixel 9's main sensor? That was 50 MP, wasn't it? Yep. 
a definite step down from the Pixel 9's superior 50MP sensor, and the ultra-wide. Also looks like a downgrade, maybe from 48MP down to 12 or 13MP, with a much smaller sensor size too. Wow. On the upside, both the ultra-wide and telephoto might get an improved macro mode. So, okay, this is a real gamble for the base Pixel 10 then. Yeah. They're giving you the versatility of telephoto, which is great. Yeah. But potentially sacrificing raw image quality from the main and ultra-wide cameras. How does that make sense? It's Google betting heavily on their software, their computational photography, their AI. Thinking the software can make up for the hardware limitations. Exactly. They're basically testing the limits of software-defined photography, betting that their industry-leading processing and maybe new AI editing tools can effectively compensate for those smaller sensors. It's asking. Can software really overcome hardware trade-offs, especially maybe in tricky low light? Hmm. That's a bold bet. Mm. What about the higher-end models, the pros and the fold? There, the camera specs look largely consistent with last year. The 10 Pro and Pro XL are rumored to keep that 50MP Samsung GNV main sensor, okay. backed up by a trio of 48MP Sony sensors for telephoto, ultra-wide, and even the selfie camera and the Pixel 10 Pro Fold. Pretty much expected to have the same camera system as the 9 Pro Fold. So clear segmentation there. Yeah. If you want the best camera hardware, you go Pro. Seems to be the message, yeah. Mm. Directing serious photographers to the Pro models while still trying to enhance the base model with versatility and, of course, AI smarts. And speaking of AI smarts, beyond the hardware, there's talk of a treasure trove of new AI editing features. Oh. Speak to tweak. Sounds like you can just tell your phone how to edit a photo. Likely, yeah. Using voice suggestions. Then there's sketch to image. Right. Draw a rough outline, AI fills it in. Exactly. And strong hints about magic editor for video, maybe other generative AI video tools, potentially even access to Google VO3. Their new AI video generator. Could be. Imagine creating or tweaking video clips just from text prompts or rough sketches, all using on-device AI. That's pretty wild. And of course, the existing AI features Magic Eraser, Audio Magic Eraser, Call Screen, Best Take. They're all expected to get even better, thanks to the Tensor G5's extra processing power. Right. It really underlines that AI-first approach, moving way beyond simple filters into really intelligent, generative editing. Totally. Okay, powering through the day. Battery. No huge leaps in raw capacity expected for most models, I'm right? I'm right. 10, 10 Pro, around 4,700 milliti. Pro XL, maybe 5,060 milliti. That's the rumor, yeah. Pretty similar to the 9 series. But significant improvements in actual battery life are still expected. How does that work? It comes back to efficiency. That Tensor G5 on TSMC's 3 nanometer process, plus that rumored switch to the more efficient MediaTek modem. Oh. That combination should mean the phone just sips power more carefully. So even with similar battery sizes, you get longer real-world usage, less heat, more consistent performance, actual all-day usability, even with heavy AI use. Which users definitely want. Battery life is always high on the list. Absolutely. User polls always show that. Google keeps promising all-day battery life, even claiming up to 100 hours in extreme battery saver mode. Now, the Pixel 10 Pro Fold is expected to get a capacity bump. Yeah, a more noticeable one, rumored around 5,015 millihar, which is about a 7% increase over the 9 Pro Fold, so that's getting capacity and efficiency gains. Focusing on efficiency over just stuffing in a bigger battery? Mm. It sounds smart, but do you think regular consumers will get that? Or do they just see the Ma number? That's a fair point. It's about how Google markets it, right? <laughs> Communicating that real-world benefit. True. What about charging? Wired speeds? Uh, the Pixel 10 and 10 Pro likely up to 55% in 30 minutes, assuming you use Google's 45W charger. Though the base model might be capped a bit lower, maybe 30W. Okay. The Pro XL might get up to 70% in 30 minutes. They'll all still support USB power delivery PPS standard stuff there. And wireless. Expected across the board, potentially up to 23W. Key 2 support is a real possibility. Ah, uh, the magnetic alignment one. Yeah, better alignment, less heat, good stuff. Reverse wireless charging should be back too. It really shows a more maybe mature strategy from Google. Focus on systemic efficiency, optimize power use, deliver that all day life smartly, not just with brute force capacity. Right, setting a standard for efficiency. Yeah. Okay, now for the real core of Google's AI push. The Pixel 10 series, poised to be an AI powerhouse. Loads of improvements, new features, the Google's Material 3 expressive design. What does expressive actually mean visually? Expressive here, it seems to emphasize more dynamic themes, uh, more fluid animations, more personalized looks, just a more refined, cohesive feel that adapts better to your style. Gotcha. 
Android 16 also brings some key usability upgrades. Notifications get streamlined with live updates. Think real-time food delivery tracking right in the notification. Oh, nice. And auto grouping to cut down clutter. Big improvements for accessibility too, especially for hearing aid users. And security gets beefed up with advanced protection, pulling together Google's strongest mobile security features. And that big productivity feature developed with Samsung, hmm. desktop windowing, being able to open, move, resize multiple app windows on big screens like tablets and foldables. That sounds like a proper desktop experience. What? Huge for foldables, right? Oh, absolutely. A potential game changer for making foldables feel truly productive. Now, while Android 16 enables it, this specific feature might roll out a bit later in the year on compatible devices. Okay, good to know. Other usability tweaks include predictive back, clearer cues when swiping back haptic sliders for volume brightness for better feel, custom keyboard shortcuts, a taskbar overflow for smoother multitasking on big screens. Oh, and a new trade-in mode for better privacy when you trade in your old phone. Lots of refinement there. Yeah, Android 16 on the Pixel 10 feels like a mature evolution. Focusing on core needs, productivity on bigger screens, better accessibility, stronger security, it positions Android and therefore Pixel as a more versatile, more inclusive platform overall. Okay, the million dollar question, well, maybe the 799 question. When can people get these and what's the damage? Rumors suggest pricing might stay the same as the Pixel 9 series. That's the word on the street, yeah which would be really welcome news, especially, like you said, for potential Fold buyers, seeing how Samsung hiked prices on their latest foldables. Right. Remind us of the Pixel 9 prices. The Pixel 9 started at $799, Pixel 9 Pro at $999, and the Pixel 9 Pro XL at $1099. So if those hold, that's pretty competitive. Definitely. And availability. The reveal is August 20th. Reports suggest pre-orders might kick off the same day, August 20th, with phones actually shipping, general availability, maybe around August 28th. Pretty quick turnaround. Okay, let's zoom out, connect the dots here. Yeah, stepping back, this whole Pixel 10 launch, it really highlights the strategic evolution, doesn't it? That deliberate August timing, the Tensor G5's laser focus on AI, the display upgrades prioritizing comfort, the camera's software first bet, that emphasis on systemic battery efficiency. It all points to a very clear path Google's forging, solidifying that AI-first identity. And what's really fascinating is seeing how all these pieces, the hardware, the software, the AI, seem to be converging to finally realize that ambient intelligence vision with things like Pixel Sense. Exactly. It's not just a list of new features. It feels like a more cohesive ecosystem where advanced on-device AI is meant to fundamentally transform how you use your phone for photos, for getting stuff done, just for daily interactions and keeping prices competitive. That suggests they really want to broaden the appeal of this increasingly smart user-focused lineup. Which leads to a really interesting question for you, the listener, to think about. If Google's big bet on software intelligence, on AI making up for hardware, truly pays off, could the Pixel 10 actually redefine what we expect from a smartphone? Could it make raw specs feel, well, less important than having a genuinely smart, adaptive, intuitive experience in your hand? Something to chew on. We hope this deep dive is giving you a solid shortcut to understanding what's coming with Google's latest Pixel lineup.